Welcome everyone back. We're going to continue with using our new cube from the previous lesson and this time around we're going to use it to build a sky map. On the screen I have um, learnopengl.com which is a great resource if you want to continue learning um, GL. Um, just realize that this site writes everything in C++ so you kind of need to translate to JavaScript and uh, WebGL. Uh, it's not that hard and you know, that's, that's one, of, one of the site, many sites I use to help learn. So for this lesson, I actually went and started reading about how to use cube maps because it is required to make sky maps. Uh, there's two components. It's a cube that's so large that it encompasses an area, and you actually live inside the cube. And then this cube map is a three-dimensional texture that you build by using six images. Uh, so it's basically kind of like in our previous lesson where we had a texture for each face of a cube. This one we kind of build one big texture that can be applied to a cube in one go. It, uh, I've read it's more efficient and it works better than actually having several textures uh, put together. Um, and it just it just makes things a little bit easier to control. So the only th the only difference between a cube map and a regular texture is that a texture is 2D. So you access it by using the UV, which is um, you know, an ST value or XY value. Q maps are three-dimensional. So you need to actually um, get a pixel on a cube map texture uh, with a directional uh, value of three components, X, Y, Z. And this, this site illustrates it very well. Um, it, from the origin, you know, if you're looking at a certain direction, it then kind of piggybacks that direction the direction you're kind of looking at and it determines that by the corners of the cube the positions of the cubes are also the direction that um, we're looking at or the, the actual direction values that we need to use so it makes it really easy because we don't even need UV values um, at all or um, or normals for a cube map we're going to reuse the cube from the previous lesson which has all that but you know down the line I'll probably get rebuild a sky map cube specifically, like bare bones to, to what we need. But for now, we're just going to be used the previous lesson. Um, when I was messing around with this is that I tried to mess around with the position of the cube and actually moving it outside or origin would actually screw things up. Like it, it kind of distorts the image a little bit. So with trial and error, I kind of realized that you have to be at origin. Uh, it makes uh, the rendering of the pixels and the directions work the best. So, um, and the cube needs to be a certain size. Uh, for this lesson, I build it at 10 by 10 by 10. And um, you can actually go past that 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 um, that length. Like let's say if I, I decide to move the mini cube that we're gonna have in, inside our world, um, like 11 units forward, it will actually live behind our sky map and you won't be able to see it. So like if you're going to use this for a game, you might have to build this cube to be, you know, maybe 100 units big um, based on how much you want to be able to see at a distance. So this cube kind of creates our world. So I guess that's really all really the gist of a cube map. It's three-dimensional. We access it by using the position of the cube um, of all every single vertice and... That's and we build it by using six images. Now the only thing we need to do is get some really good sky maps, and I found one on um, Epic Games. So uh, this guy named Hipshot made some really beautiful sky map images, and he mentions that anyone is allowed to use it for wherever they want, as long as we mention his name that he made these. So definitely mentioning it, Hipshot, and I really want to say they're actually absolutely beautiful. Um, when I was actually done and I had a, a working prototype going, I was just flabbergasted, like how beautiful they look like when you actually see it. So you guys are going to be very happy with these. Um, you can either download them. Uh, problem is they are uh, a, a weird format. You would actually have to go into like Photoshop or something and resave them out as something else. Else you can go into the GitHub for this uh, series. And in the shared folder, I have the main two textures that I'm using. Um, or main two sky maps I'm using for this because we're actually going to actually build a day and night scene and have it transition between the two kind of like how in games they have uh, the, the day and night cycle um, so there are PNGs and they're all 
prep and ready on GitHub if you want, or you can just download these and do the work yourself. So we're going to start modifying our code in our primitives.js file, and we're going to fix up our cube a little bit so it's more reusable for um, so we can have a regular cube that from our previous lesson that's dancing around, and we can have our sky map cube. So uh, is line twenty eight, or actually yeah, line twenty eight. Uh, we add name because we want to save uh, a, a different cube by a different name into our cache. And then inside of it, we um, when we call create mesh inside create model, we have name or cube. So this way, uh, the previous uh, example doesn't break because we have a new attribute. So by default, it will call a cube or it'll use the name that you bring it in. And then the next change is we just bring in name into our create mesh. And then at the bottom, line 86, instead of having a car coded name cube, we just put in the name variable. So that's all the changes we need to do. So this way we, we make, make this all reusable. Next thing we need to do is add a new function to our camera class. So it's called get translate list matrix. Uh, it's hard for me to say. Um, I just couldn't come up with a good name for it at all. Um, it's just the matrix, the, the view matrix for the camera with without the translate um, setup. Uh, what it actually does, it makes a copy of the view matrix and kind of just wipes out the the values that translate. And in case you don't realize, translate is really just moving position because the idea, because you got to remember, cameras don't exist. All the cameras do is the inverse of what where the camera is set up to. So if, if it's Moving backwards, it actually makes everything in the world go forward. If it's rotating left, it makes everything in the world rotate right. So since a camera doesn't exist and its matrix actually does a lot of movement, like rotation, scale, and translation, we don't want our sky map to move. So if we move forward or we, you know, we change the camera, the sky map will start moving around too, and it will be a little funky. So what we want it to do is the sky map to stand still and the rest of the world moves because we, as the viewer into this virtual world, is stuck at origin. We can't see anything in origin. It's the entire world that rotates around us. So what we want is we want the sky map to rotate and we probably want it to scale too, but we don't want it to move. So we want it to be still in, 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 a, in our, vir our virtual space. So that's the reason why this function exists, because we just want to prevent the, the cube from moving. But what we need to pass in rotation. So this way we can look up, we can look down, we can look left, we can look right. So this is what this function does. Now we're going to add a new function to our gl.js file, and it's going to be called load cube map. So this function is built to make things a little bit easier and more, not to say more efficient, but just easier overall by... Um, making just a simple array instead of having a bunch of parameters, you know, for each specific face. And um, by having it, by, but you have to force it by a specific order because we're, I'm doing this, especially by how OpenGL Learn did it. They did it the same way. And it makes very good sense. And it does make the code a little bit um, easier to manage instead of having a bunch of duplicating lines and actually having the parameters all, you know, having, you know, longer parameters. Um, so th the reason why it does that is because the constants for each face of a cube do increment. But as long as you put them in a proper order, so if you start with right as the smallest number, it will continue incrementing until it reaches front, which is the largest number of, out of the six. So we can actually start with um, map positive x and just keep adding one to it. And then we'll we'll get to left, top, bottom, back, front, and we have a, just a simple for loop that just uploads all the images to uh, the GPU. So that's how this function works, and the reason why we're gonna have to load in an array of images, but in a specific order. It just makes things a little bit easier to manage, and it makes it less code. Um, so like the first thing we're going to do is check to make sure the array has the right number. Uh, if it's less than six or greater than six, th th this is not going to work. It's going to break the, the function. So we're, we're just doing some error checking right at the beginning. 
And then just like how we do textures before, we create a texture ID and then we bind it. But this time we're binding to texture cube map on line 172 instead of uh, texture 2D because you know we're building a cube map. And then there's the for loop I explained. And we bind it to we bind an image to each face. Or actually we're not binding it, we're actually uploading an image to each face of the cube map. After that, we, we set up our settings. We do the scaling up and scaling down. And we're not using mip maps because um, sky maps are pretty static. So we don't need mip maps at all uh, for sky maps. So that's the reason for the min filter is now set to linear. And I know I experimented a little bit with mip maps, but we, we just don't need it. And I, I just left it commented out just for now. And then after we set up our scalings, we kind of just tell GL to clamp our textures to the edges of the cubes to make sure they stretch all the way through. Um, the cube is going to be built perfectly so it, the images won't be stretched or look funky at all. So, But it, we just do this just to make sure we, there's no like gaps or holes or anything weird happening. And then after that we um, just unbind our uh, texture cube map and we save it to our texture class. And this really, that's all, this is all it takes to actually load a cube map pretty simple it's, it's almost the same as regular text mess uh, a regular uh, texture except we're just instead of loading just one texture and then calling it a day we just have to load um, six of them and put them in the proper places and that's it for loading now we're going to move on to the next thing which should be the HTML page all right so the first order of business is to create some variables um, on line 23, at the very end, I add in a global sky map and global sky map shader. So after that, we go into line 39, and we're we're going to load up our cube maps. So we're just going to grab the the six images or 12 images actually. We're going to grab our day and our night images, and we're just going to load up and create our cube maps. So after that, we scroll down. And uh, when we're setting up all our models, we're going to actually set up our sky map. So at line 64, um, we're going to use our cube, and we're going to pass in the store name sky map, and then we're going to set the size of the cube. Um, 10 by 10 works out pretty well for our viewer. Uh, if you're going to build like a game or something, you might have to have to go much higher, maybe 50 or 100. Um, it really depends on how far of a distance you want to be able to see before the sky map kind of just clips um, your viewing. So after we've got our um, sky map mesh and model set up, we have our sky map shader. And um, it's this new shader we're going to build in a second. And, you know, we just pass in our usual stuff, our GL, our projection matrix, and our two textures that we just made. So we scroll down some more in our on render function. You know, we're just going to add in our uh, sky shader to to render our sky map. Um, it's pretty much just like our test shader. We activate the shader. The pre-render ha handles on loading up the textures to the uniforms. Um, we set the camera matrix, but we use our new function that uh, prevents translations from happening. It only only allows um, scaling and uh, rotation. Uh, we're going to set time because we're going to want to do some animations because we're going to want to transition between day and night uh, cycles. And then we just render model. Uh, pretty much like how everything else is that we have. So let's see, we scroll down some more. And now we have our sky map. And this is our sky map shader. Um, it's pretty much as the usual, you know. Uh, we, we're going to grab a shader from the DOM, um, and then we grab some custom uniforms that we have in our shader. We're going to have U-Time, U-Day Texture, and U-Night Texture. Um, and we're going to save our texture IDs. And then we have our set time function in there, which just pushes the time value to uh, a uniform in our texture, um, in our shader. And then there's our pre-render. And our pre-render sets up our cube maps. And as you can see, we're setting up two textures uh, for our cube map. So we activate texture zero, and then we push in our day good day into it, and then uh, we open up uh, texture one, and we put our nighttime into that one. 
So we just bind uh, the texture ID to that one specific thing. Now when we scroll down, we got into the HTML, you'll see the tw uh, yeah, 12 images that we're loading up. Um, you know, we're loading up the three. The first one is the daytime and grim night is obviously our nighttime. So we scroll down some more, we're gonna actually have some more shaders. Uh, we got the sky V shader and the sky F shader, you know, our vertex and fragment shaders. And the shaders are actually pretty simple. Um, our V shader is very simple. Um, the one thing you might notice, there's a VEC4 for position, and that's because we're using our cube that we're using that has four components instead of three, because we're using the fourth component, fourth component for colors. Um, like I said, if down the line, maybe it will, I'll remake the sky map stuff um, with its own cube that's a little bit more efficient, but this that's the only reason why we have a VEC4. It should really be a VEC3 if we actually make a proper cube um, just for sky maps. Um, so because of that, we when we we set up our text coordinates instead of it, you know, we say X Y Z. And remember, um, Q maps are based on direction, so we don't really need um, our UVs at all. Uh, I still have the UV in here uh, as a as an attribute, but we really don't use it at all um, for sky maps. So it's uh, our position becomes our uh, UV texture coordinate. And like I said, it's a direction. It's a direction based on the origin. So, uh, so yeah. And same thing with line two forty. Uh, when we create the vec four, I I take make sure to grab the x y z components and leave out the w, so we don't mess anything up. And then uh, then in our fragment shader, uh, it's pretty easy. We uh, we get in our texture coordinate. Um, as you can see, we're using another. Uh, type instead of sampler 2D, we're using sampler cube. It just tells us, okay, we, we have a, a cube map, not a 2D texture, so it knows to take in um, three dim uh, directional uh, position instead of um, you know UV coordinates. And then there's our time, and there's our final color. Our final color mixes be between day and night, so the mixed texture day text and then the second one would be a night texture and then I'm using absolute sign to just calculate a value between 0 and 1 because uh, the sign makes a value between negative 1 and 1 so if I do absolute I automatically get rid of that negative so it just bounces back and forth back, back and forth between 0 and 1 so that that one line of code is what actually generates the animation between our daytime and nighttime cycle so that's pretty much all it takes to really put together um, a, a cube map and a sky map. So let's go into the browser and see how it all looks. So here we are. We are now in the sky map. Um, as you can see, you can rotate around, spin, move. You zoom in the whole spiel. And you see that the the sky map actually just goes back and forth between day and night and night, uh, daylight and nighttime. Um, that's really it, you know, in a long, long, I, for a long time, I've always never understood or always wondered how day and nighttime cycles work in video games. And, uh, in this lesson, I actually finally got to learn it and it's actually very simple. Uh, I, I actually feel kind of silly. It's like, wow, this is very simple. It's just one big, massive three-dimensional texture. And all you do is fade between two of them. And that is our day and night cycle. And as you can see, our world looks so much more bigger now, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's just a white room. Now we have tons of clouds. It's, we have moonlight. We have sunlight. Uh, you can say that our now uh, our cube uh, has its rave party. It just dances from from night to from day to ah, whatever. Just from night. It just dances all day long, night and day, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's late. It's like. 2.40 in the morning, and I'm trying to record this, so, um, yeah, that's it, I'm actually pretty excited, this is awesome, um, because of this lesson, I am really start uh, researching uh, web VR, and I really probably want to do that soon, um, get 
where we are working. Uh, I don't really know how many of you people have uh, VR headsets that you can use, so I don't know how um, useful that's going to be for you guys. But for the people that might have one, or at least have a Vive, uh, having some way to kind of just be able to see this little world now, especially with the day and night cycles, might be really neat. Um, so on maybe in a couple lessons, I'll see if I can um, integrate WebVR with our WebGL um, little simple framework. So that's probably something in the future. So, But I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, this seems fun. I, I'm, to me, I'm excited. Uh, this And it just adds a whole new level. I kind of even never thought I would, of having this in. This was never part of my original prototype um, that actually got me into thinking of making a series. So this to me was just fun. This is something new. It, you know, hopefully it makes you excited and into learning and getting more into this, like how I am. Um, so yeah, that's that should be it. Uh, should got let you guys go, play around, maybe try some other texture uh, textures from that website that I showed you guys. Uh, maybe you can go Google out for more um, sky maps that might be fun. Um, make your own if you want and see well, how that works out. Um, and like, there's that, that, uh, learn OpenGL site. Um, definitely check it out. It has a lot of great resources, uh, a lot to learn. Uh, there's so much to learn in this field. Um, we, we're not barely even done cracking the, anything at all. This is just basic 101 stuff. I, I'm by how I'm understanding everything. So, um, that's it. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, you know, like and subscribe, comments, suggestions, whatever. Um, so see you guys all in the next lesson.